Laboratories have been a staple in my content for a long time now, and no sci-fi setting is truly complete without a laboratory. So today we're looking at some cool ideas to make your labs stand out. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another tutorial on the channel. Today we're going to be looking at some laboratory equipment, and we'll be looking at it from two perspectives. One is going to be the general like white gray sort of lab and then the other is going to be a more dark and sinister version of it i will also be covering a lot of vanilla ways to do these things as well as a couple examples of how you can use custom player heads and armor stands to get some of these effects so first up today we have terminals because every laboratory needs a place where you can actually control everything right so here we have let's start with this one right we have a computer terminal using some custom maps that you can make um and it has a nice screen you could also just have some black concrete here to make it look like the screen has been turned off and then we've throughout this whole thing we're going to be using a lot of banners and a lot of uh, shield banners to uh make some details so we have a little keyboard we're also using one of the the new disc shards for a mouse there i have a cell phone and a envelope over there and then just as a little added bonus we have susan just lying on the desk and that is a really nice uh classic way of making a terminal uh with some very expensive lodestone speakers and then to go with that look, we have this little holographic display here with a little squiggly dial on the one side using the invisible glow item frames. I'll leave a command for that in the description. And then a custom player head for a globe that is basically being holographically projected. I've just left this uh, stair here open so you can actually see that there is a ender chest under here to give a little bit of a particle effect to make this look like the hologram is actually coming from below. Then the next one is the more sinister version of the terminal. And here we also have a keyboard and a mouse. We have a can of Mountain Dew and a little Pepe. <laughs> and then a couple of small screens and a big screen using a painting if you don't have the patience to make map art like that. And we also have some uh, banners to make speakers so you don't have to use lodestones and a skull because why not and then here we have a more vanilla version of a hologram with the same sort of uh, ender chest setup at the bottom just in case you're not using custom player heads then moving on we have some tanks and these could be for keep storing fluids or it could be some kind of energy cell like a battery or something like that in your lab and here we have a battery cell that is being powered by frog light power apparently and it's going into this control panel uh using banner uh shields to to make a control panel and then some sort of interface and on this side we have a slime container and it uses another banner shield and then a custom head with an armor stand to put a valve in which is a really cool little uh design that i have used a lot in the past and then at the back here, we have a fluid container containing some lava and that is being siphoned in from the top. And then it has an overflow that runs into a pipe that will then power something or whatever you decide you want to do. So those are the cells and tanks. Now, before we move on to the rest of these, I think it is important for us to acknowledge a little bit of safety. Uh, we're going to decontaminate ourselves before we move into the rest of the lab. Also, fire extinguisher, just so you guys know. And then coming in here, we have the decontamination chamber that turns on a little shower to give you a little splash. And then you can either put on your vanilla hazmat suits or you could use some custom textures and do van um, hazmat suits like these. And uh, you can use an invisible armor stand here to have it look like it's actually hanging on a hook. There's also uh, banner shields here to look like little vents. And then the signs, which are glow signs, right? And going out, the shower does not turn on again. In fact, the machine actually resets. Let me just show you guys what I mean by that. So down here, we have a little bit of redstone and it basically gets triggered by the, the pressure plate and then goes into a 
Rising Edge Monostable here because there is a um, Sticky Piston over there. That goes into yet another Rising Edge Monostable that puts the power into the Sticky Piston and actually activates the dispenser that's at the top. So let me just show you guys what I mean by that. First, we press the button. That one goes. This one gets pushed forward. This one gets powered for just as long as the pulse extender allows and then retracts and turns off the shower. And then when you go out again, it will just reset, not actually turn on the shower. Right, so now that we have decontaminated ourselves, it's time to move into the medical lab. And apart from the obvious like uh, medical cabinets and all of that sort of stuff, I wanted to focus on the actual operating tables. So here we have a very basic operating table design um, with a IV drip sort of thing hanging here off of the chain and then a, um, a surgery light up at the top here, both using the invisible item frames as well as this heart rate monitor or, or medical monitor over here that has been put against a opened trapdoor so that it can float in the air and this map has also been done in vanilla so that is pretty cool and uh, you could you could have this just hanging off of here if you want however you want but uh, i thought it was really cool that when you come up to the operating table you actually have this display right in front of you then over here we have the slightly more sinister version of it using um the armor stand book to put a custom player head in as the light and then using some signs to actually make a bit of a display where we have the heart rate we have the fact that the, the patient is in a stable condition how long they've been on the table and how much it's going to cost them so if you have like a ripper doc or some kind of um you know, commercial doctor, then uh, yeah, you could have something like this where it displays how much the person is going to be out of pocket after. Next up, we're moving to analyzers and extractors. And uh, you could you could look at this whichever way you want. This could either be analyzing the, uh, the dragon head in here, or it could be extracting some sort of plasma that then goes into a tank over here with some interface and another little control panel on the side or it could be analyzing something like the skulk shrieker here using invisible item frames to make a little bit of a particle effect with the echo shards and then that could be extracting into this tank over here and then the next one is more of an analyzer or in this case i'm actually using the laser to heat up my taco but yeah, you could have an analyzer or a laser sort of set up like this one, or you can have one like this that's a little bit more sinister looking again. And this one is just analyzing uh, why there is a wither rose growing out of this with a skeleton skull. And I have just placed this on a daylight detector there so that it sticks out at just the right height so you can't actually see the flower pot and then just to make sure that all of our labs are nice and clean i have two little roomba designs here where we're using the shields and banners to make a little bit of a face for it and then a little light at the back and of course every roomba needs a cat on top of it so there you go next we're going to be talking about botany a little bit and uh if you can hear that, we'll, we'll get to why you can hear warden sounds in a minute, I promise. But getting back to the botany, we have this little hydroponic setup over here. Now that we have mangrove roots that can be uh, waterlogged, I think it's very important uh, to note that you can actually put fans on top of them and keep their color. So here we're growing a couple of coral fans for our experimentations and our needs. And then on this side, we're growing some pickles because why not pickles? Uh, we have the waterlogged leaves at the bottom here and there's actually a water supply coming up from down from the top and using some signs with the, uh, the purple makes it look like it's got more of a black light effect, which is very nice. So if you guys are finding any of this useful so far, I would really appreciate it. Like it helps the channel quite a lot. And so more people can actually see these videos and uh, get some ideas for themselves. Now, the next section we have here, I have dubbed vats because it's just containers, containment chambers and the likes that you can use to display some of your experiments. 
So for example, you could have a custom player head that represents some kind of scientific artifact, or you could have a vat where you're growing some kind of monstrosity as like a clone, or you could just be keeping some of your aquatic samples in basically an aquarium. Then if you don't want to be using uh, the armor stand mo uh, data pack for any of this, you could have a setup like this with a much smaller vat where you could display some of the actual heads in the game and completely vanilla. It, they don't have to be all that big, but uh, yeah, you could do something like this. We could also have some other sorts of samples of other nefarious things. Or you could think about things that, uh, for instance, drowns don't drown. So you could have a drowned in here with the bu bubble column stopping at that level there. So you can keep him in stasis. And he also does a little dance for you every once in a while, which is very entertaining. Thank you, Mr. Drowned. Or you can think about things that don't actually take fire damage and have them be in the water like this with the magma blocks so that they don't drown but they also don't take fire damage. You could also just not have water in any of them and just keep things in, in containment glass chambers because why not? They all also feed into different various uh, systems where they could be extracting things or they could be getting powered or some thing or the other, just a couple of different pipe variations and uh, and the likes. And then last, but by no means less, we have our warden containment chamber this one is a little dangerous so use it with caution uh, and i'd also suggest putting this at the end of a very long corridor so that you either don't hear him or you don't get the darkness effect right now nothing's affecting me because i'm in creative i just want to show you guys but then we'll switch over to survival just to see what's going on here so first of all um, make sure that that part of the chamber is at least six blocks away from however close you can get to it. Um, because otherwise he will sniff you out and get angry and shoot you through the glass. And here we have a couple of pillars in the corner here that are powering some kind of force field to keep him in place. You can also see some note blocks down there that will activate when we go inside to cause a noise machine to distract it just enough so that you can maybe grab a sample from him without dying. Going in here, we have a button that's going to open this door, but also close this one just for extra safety purposes. So if I switch over to survival real quick, let me just open this up. As you can hear, the noise machine has turned on. I would give it a couple of seconds before going in here so that he can actually take note of the noise machine and not you. And then I'd be very careful where I step. I've put a lot of um, wool down here, but still you could accidentally step on one of these shelf blocks and uh, alert him. So stay crouched and don't touch him. Grab your sample and then get the hell out of there because otherwise he will get angry and you will die. Uh, but yeah, that is the Warden Containment Chamber all done and dusted. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this video. I'm just kidding. I'll show you guys quickly what the machine does. Um, so down here, it uh, there's a magic button, first of all, that is uh, triggered by this little setup over here. And that goes into a circuit that then uh, unpowers the door, closing it, and also powers all of this little uh, torch elevator to open that door. So if I press this, you'll see that this door has opened, the um, iron door has been depowered, and down here we have set up a little bit of an observer clock to run the noise machine. And that is basically how this machine works. All right, fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, by the way, I have used a lot of banners and signs in this video. So if you guys want to see more about what you can do with that, check out this video in the top right hand corner right now. See ya.